How much can you earn staging homes for a living? We're going to attempt to answer that question in this week's Foxy TV. If you're a startup, the answer is going to be different to an established business that you know is at a, a bit more of a stable growth rate. For us, the by far the biggest expense as a business is staff, employees. In year one, half of our revenue went straight back into new stock. But the short answer is as soon as you can afford to, if that's what your ambition is. Having the logistics in-house and making that change for us was a huge um, benefit. Every dollar was being pulled in four different directions and we were thinking about, can we pay ourselves? That was Jake, co-owner of Foxy Home Staging, and he is going to attempt to answer as best he can the question of how much can you earn staging homes for a living. In the process of doing so, Jake's going to go into quite a bit of detail. He's gonna be touching on things like, for every dollar earned as a business, how much are you then spending on wages, on new stock, new furniture, on rent in a warehouse. And not only does he do that from where the business is today at about six years, he also looks back at the life cycle of, of Foxy in year one, in years two to three to four to five, and what it looked like along the way. So hopefully, no matter where you are at, at your business life cycle, you'll be able to find something that is applicable or helpful to you. Now, it's all well and good that we have a warehouse, our own furniture, a large team, our own trucks, but what about the businesses that are solo or small teams of two, three, four or five people who rent furniture who have to contract out the logistics side of the business well you are in luck because i put that question to jake and he, he answers that towards the end of the episode i asked jake when you should hire your first or next employee and I, I asked him a tough question if you had to hire a marketing person or a logistics person in your business which should you hire which should you hire first now i'll leave you hanging for the answer you'll just have to watch the episode to find out well, i'm sick of talking i'm sure you're sick of hearing me talk let's jump straight into the episode with jake doing an update actually on a, a video that we did, I think it was about four years ago, three and a half, four years ago. Um, the title of that video was something like, how much can you make as a home stager? Um, so we, at the time, answered some questions or basically shared our numbers, our experience as a home staging company. At that point, kind of two and a half, three years into the business, um, what we had experienced and learned. So a lot has changed since then. Uh, we're sitting in a different warehouse than we were at that time. Um, we've got a much bigger team, both styling, logistics, marketing, admin. Um, we've got a lot more furniture and things that we're doing. Our volume of um, installs is um, significantly higher. I kind of wanted to do an update on this and talk through some of what we've learned since then and put some actual numbers to to what, you know, to answer that kind of similar question. That won't be the only question I answer, but you know, that's the one that everybody I think wants to, you know, it's probably the most interesting. How much can you earn as a home staging business? I do have my little cheat sheet here. I'm not gonna bore people with that, but I am gonna touch on some of the high level sort of stuff. As I was going back through our numbers and looking at the kind of most recent financial year ending in June, 2023, I was comparing it to previous years. And I think something that I had already subconsciously or you know I thought about, but I hadn't actually looked at the numbers to confirm this is that if I'm looking at the six years of business that we've um, been operating, we have seen kind of three stages of our business uh, and we're only in this last year now in the third stage. So when we did the video last time, I think we were in the startup phase. We were, I think that for us went for about three years and that, that period of time was all about every dollar was being pulled in four different directions. We were tight on cash. We were trying to build a team. We were trying to do some marketing. We were trying to build, uh, buy furniture and build our inventory. And we were thinking about, can we pay ourselves? A lot of things going on and there's not enough money to do all of it. Like I said, that lasted about three years. Um, and I'll talk about some of the numbers in that phase. We then had a couple of years of what I would consider a really high growth period where we'd kind of gotten through that initial period, initial three years. We had some cash because we were at that point, we were using our own inventory. We had more cash available to reinvest, to build a more team, um, to get more furniture. That was a period for us where we went through, you know, so we had one year of uh, down 50% growth and then the next year we actually doubled. So we had one year in there where we, we doubled almost everything across the business. What we could make in those years and where we spent our money was very different than the first three years. The most recent year, which I think is the first time that we stopped to look at it, is because of the market slowing down a little bit and because of some things that Phoebe and I have done to kind of put a cap on some of the growth to slow it down intentionally. It's the first year where we didn't have this incredibly high growth. We had, we still grew, but we didn't grow at these rates where all our money had to go to new furniture. So for the first time, we kind of had a bit of spare cash and we, we were saying, how do we be a bit more intentional about where this needs to go and what can we do with it than we other, that maybe we didn't have that option in the past. Those are the kind of three periods that I want to talk about because to, to answer the question, how much can you earn as a home staging business? The simple answer and the boring answer, and it might sound like a bit of a cop out, is it depends. And I think, 
I'm still gonna, I'm not gonna use that as my excuse. I'm gonna give you our answer. I think it's important to know where you're at as a business in those three growth phases. If you're a startup, the answer is gonna be different to an established business that you know is at a, a bit more of a stable growth rate um, and has money that they can, or cash coming in, that they can think about how to invest it to help grow the business further. There's a couple of numbers in particular that I wanna to touch on that change depending on those phase that you're in. For us, the by far the biggest expense as a business is staff, employees. And I think that's always gonna be the case. And this is outside of furniture because that's kind of a, um, it's an investment, it's a capital investment. So I'll talk about that separately. And that's the sort of thing that you can increase or decrease depending on what's available. Whereas once you've got your people in place, it's kind of a fixed cost. I have seen in the most recent year, now that we're kind of a little bit more stable and we've, like we said, we had that money to think about how to invest in our business and, and what options we had, we made the decision to hire more people that in previous years we were, you know, we hired people only when we needed them. We kind of pushed it to the limit. And now we're hiring more people to give us a bit more buffer, to start the training earlier, to get us ready for whatever other growth we see in the in the coming years. To give, put some numbers to it, as a percentage of revenue, between 30 and 35% um, of your revenue is going out straight to wages. Like I said, in the most recent year for us, that's a, it's at the higher end of that intentionally. During our high growth years, it was lower because like I said, we pushed the team a little bit further. Does that include you? as an owner, a wage to use, right? No, so when I talk about these numbers, I'm talking about staff only. We, Phoebe and I are not employees of the business. Um, as the owners, we take, a, I guess technically, as from an accounting point of view, um, tax point of view, it's like a distribution, it's a dividend, I guess. I'll talk about that in a minute a little bit. That kind of comes more at the profit level. I know some people would probably do it differently and have themselves as employees, so that number will change a little bit. Most of our other expenses have stayed relatively stable from a percentage point of view. So obviously our rent has increased when we've gone to a new warehouse, but as a percentage of our revenue, it's kind of around the same, somewhere between four and 6% of our revenue. Things like advertising, insurance, all those sorts of things, relatively the same as well from a percentage point of view. So as the business grew, we increased our spend, but the same amount, uh, same percentage um, is going to those things. Probably the biggest thing that changed for us from a expense point of view was in the startup phase, we were hiring a lot of furniture. We were, especially for the first year, we had external logistics company. So all of those costs, hiring furniture, hiring an external logistics team and truck, those things disappeared once we brought them in house or, or went to a, the logistics team is now a cost internally as an employees, as employees. But now that we have our own inventory, we don't have to hire the furniture. So that cost was very high in the early years and now it's very low. And the, the cost of sales, like the things that are directly attributable to the jobs are things like your, your fuel and your tolls, some of the other, what we call consumables, I guess, all of the little things like the screws and the Jiprock plugs and the light bulbs and all that sort of stuff. It's, it's all pretty small from a percentage point of view. The probably more interesting one that I look at is what we've decided to spend on new stock because that number also has fluctuated quite a bit. In the first three years, the startup phase, we were spending around the 30% of our profit was going straight back into inventory. And when I say 30%, that's not because 30% is the best number. For us, that was because that's what was left over. We were spending almost everything we had. And in fact, um, I said this in the last video a few years ago, in year one, we actually spent more money on inventory than the business made. So we were intentionally taking out of our own, Phoebe and my own pockets. We were dipping into our savings to help grow the business. In year two, it was the same, although it was about equal. So we didn't take anything out of the business as owners either. And it wasn't until year three that we started taking our own money out of the business, or well, partway through year two, but towards the end, where we started paying ourselves something. And, and again, that's, that was an intentional decision on our part because we wanted to reinvest everything that we could back into the business and help it grow. That's not something that I would necessarily suggest for everybody and, and it depends on your situation. But it wasn't until that third year, towards the back end of the third year, where we were able to really see that the business now is making a profit enough to pay everything that all the employees, fund the growth of the business from an, a stock point of view and start to pay ourselves as the owners. So yeah, around the 30% investment, the high growth phase, the next two years, that percentage of um, revenue that we reinvest in the stock was more like 40 to 50% in one year. So half of our revenue went straight back into new stock. And that was again, us really trying to fund that growth and push it as far as we could. So that was a decision we made. You know, I kind of look at it as, like I said, this is our, the first year, 2023 financial year, where we have gotten to a more stable level. So our investment in capital in, in stock, um, in furniture, decreased in this year because we hadn't needed, we, it was more about replacement and updating and fresh stock as opposed to funding the growth. So our percentage is back down around the 27, 28% mark. I look at that as more of a stable number. Um, if you wanna be still investing in the new new season stock, replacing outdated stuff. So it's it's more of an ongoing number to me. Somewhere around the 20 to 30% is probably where we see it going forward. What does all that mean from a revenue point of view and a profit point of view? To answer the question, 
how much can you make as a home stager? The reason I'm talking about percentages is because depending on the scale of your business, the size, how many installs you're doing, what your revenue is, you can apply these percentages to your own numbers as opposed to me telling you what the dollar number is. For us, the number of installs we're doing to give some context, in the most recent year we did 1,000 uh, and 50 or thereabouts. So a little over a thousand in a 12 month period. In the previous years, obviously we started at a lot less than that. The first year was about 130 and we've kind of grown over that time. The revenue that is alongside that in the most recent year, we mentioned this previously in another video as well. We made about $3.7 million in revenue in the 2023 financial year. And we did about 3 million the year before that. And then it's, I think in the first year we were at about 430. So to give an idea of the starting point and where we're at now. So you can apply your own percentage or apply the percentages I was talking about before to that to kind of get a, an indication of where things fall out. Putting all of that aside, because that's a lot of numbers and a lot of information kind of spat at you. If I was to just go back to how much can you make as a home staging business, from my experience, and again, depends on business model, it depends on your, you know, what phase of the business you're at. If you are in a similar business to us where it's a business model where you own your furniture, you've got your own logistics um, in-house, You've got obviously the stylist employees and all those things. This type of business, I see the profit margin is somewhere around the 40 to 50% mark. Not hard and fast rule, but that's where I see it as a stable sort of level. And anything after that is something that you decide, whether you decide to spend it on new stock, whether you decide to take it out as a business owner and, and earn more of a, a wage. I think that's one of those things where, like to give you that 40 to 50%, it's not as simple as that, but it's it's a good indication of where you can kind of think about it. To put one asterisk on that, like I said, I think there's a minimum spend on new stock being in a business like this. It's not as simple as to say we can take all of that as a uh, as an owner, as a distribution. Um, somewhere around the 20 to 30% is where I see a stable business like ours that has some level of growth um, that we still need to fund. So I don't know, I, I'm hoping that that's kind of useful. Hopefully I've answered the question without going a little overboard, but I think it's it's one of those things, it's good to know depending on where you're at, what numbers you can apply to get an idea of where you could see things going. What sort of money can you make as a solo operator or maybe one or two people? I'll, I'll give it a best guess, but I will caveat by saying, I don't know. Uh, it's not a business that we've run other than in that, particularly the first year of business for us, we were hiring a lot of our our stock, so I know, uh, you know, I have a good idea of what the profit margins are for a business like that. At the same time, we did hire employees quite early so that we're kind of in a middle ground, a little bit different. Obviously the, the profit margin on every job that you do is much, much lower. If I look at our first year of business, we're talking closer to, again, best guess, somewhere around, and, and again, if, I, if I'm wrong, I'd love to hear from other people to see what, what their experience is. I think the profit margin is closer to kind of the 25% of revenue before you start thinking about other fixed costs, but you don't have the same level of investment required in furniture. You don't have the logistics team in-house or staff costs that you would if you were employing people. So it is a much lower number. So the, in terms of making that a sustainable business, it does require, and when I say 25%, I, if I was to guess, I'd say that's on the higher side. It wouldn't surprise me at all if a lot of businesses who are in this, have this business model would say it's lower than that because you're so reliant on what the third party providers, you're very reliant on what their costs are, what they charge you and what you can do a markup on that. I think it's a very high volume if you want it to be sustainable and make you know, the higher, from a dollar point of view, higher profit um, amounts, it really is about doing more work with smaller margin per job. Different versions of this question that we get a lot, when do I bring on the next X, Y, or Z person? So when do I bring on the first uh, marketing person? When do I bring on my next or first stylist? When do I bring the logistics team in house? The short answer that, I will, that I'll expand on, but the short answer is as soon as you can afford to, if that's what your ambition is, if you're looking to build a business that has those people and that, those teams in-house, as soon as you can afford to, then you probably should. Even before you think you maybe can afford it, if you can see some growth, um, which is what we did. We didn't necessarily have you know a year's worth of um, evidence to say this is what we're making, therefore we can afford a full person's wage. We could see that there was growth. We could see that we could afford that person for the next three months. So we hired them knowing that we had the intention to keep growing and that beyond the three months, we would still have the ability to pay that person. I think we always had a little bit of a buffer to say, if the business doesn't grow the way we want it to in the next little bit, we still have enough money in the bank right now to pay them three months or whatever it was. So we had that little bit of buffer and confidence to say, we have time to make this work. The logistics team is a little bit different because to do that means you bring in probably a truck in-house and having to buy that. It's also not one person generally, unless you're the person that's gonna jump in the truck with them. It can sometimes mean two people. So it's a bigger decision, but at the same time, it's one of those things we've talked about before, that having the logistics in-house and making that change for us was a huge um, benefit 
and a huge driver of growth, just having that team in house and having the flexibility that that brings. So short answer would be as soon as you can, if that's your ambition. Sharing the mic here. Uh, we were talking to Rick from Get Stage Newcastle, who's here for the week, um, seeing how we run things. And he was sort of like, who do I hire? Is it a marketing person or a logistics person? How would you answer that question? I think, because uh, I came in, I heard a bit, a bit of this conversation and I kind of agree with what you had said. Is it, or something to consider at least, the question is, are you trying, what's more important right now? Is it, I need to grow the business, I need to get more work in, or is it I, I don't have the ability to do all the work in an efficient way right now? Because the logistics person is more about um, you know, fulfilling the jobs that you have, doing a better job with the jobs you have, whereas the marketing is, it's a bit more longer term, but the intention of bringing somebody like that on would be that it helps you build your business and, and bring in more work. And the simple or the short answer is always gonna be, I want both. So there, there's no easy answer. Mm -hmm. If you said to me, pick one and I have to, I would say the logistics person, if that's something in your business that you aren't fulfilling in the way that you'd like to right now, um, partly because by doing that part better, we've seen such benefit from having the logistics team in house and what it lets us say yes to, how it makes us look to agents when we can do something very quickly or fix something very quickly. But at the same time, and, and I'm still in your answer here a little bit, Cody, mm. if that person could be somebody who's okay to take some video on site or you know, if it's a small team, everybody kind of pitches in in different ways. If that person can also be, be somebody who contributes in some way to the marketing, even if it's just you know a couple story here and there, you know, it's a person that's you know charismatic or good on camera, then I think that's a, a benefit. I would also say though, while that is my answer, marketing is, it's a long-term branding exercise, but it's so important if you wanna grow a business to any sort of scale. If you're not kind of thinking about marketing as a core pillar of your business, I think you're selling yourself short. So it, it can't be something that you always put off for other roles. It's something that you really need to figure out how to make that work. Well, Jake, I appreciate that. You really saved yourself at the end there because I was about to walk off and just say that was my last episode of Foxy TV because okay. really you just prioritize, you made it black and white. Logistics is more important than marketing. So maybe we will just finish Foxy TV there forever. Thanks for watching the final episode of Foxy TV. Oh, sorry. Jake, thanks for the numbers. Uh -huh. Thanks, Kay. <laughs> thanks, guys. That's a good way to end. <laughs> So there you have it. There was a lot of information there. I hope it helps. I hope we answered the question, how much could you possibly earn um, as staging homes for a living um, across this industry? There's many ways to do it. Um, so hopefully you got something informative there, helpful there. If so, let us know in the comments if you found it helpful and I'm sure you probably have questions. So if anything comes to mind, leave it in the comments. We always uh, answer the comments, whether it be a written response or I will take that question and then make more videos and, and get a, a video response or in a podcast episode or something. I can leave your name out of it if you want. Totally up to you, just let us know. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you back here next week.